we just talk about a couple of case studies uh, on grassroots. And uh, one of my favorite ones, of favorite grassroots movements, is something that we created up in Canada called a Purity Open Newfoundland in Labrador. And, and, and the reason I, I like this case study is it was done on a shoestring. I think we spent 5000 bucks on it. So we had, a, we had a colleague of mine, Kevin McCann, who moved to land. And he was back home for the holidays, and he was um, um, sitting in his living room, and there was this new, this new story breaking in Newfoundland. Newfoundland, historically, Canada is the poorest province. They've always been kind of viewed as the backwater of Canada. People make fun of them in other parts of Canada. But there's a lot of oil off that's being drilled off the coast. And when Paul Martin tried to become prime minister, he committed that Newfoundland would get to keep all the tax revenues off the oil that's being drilled. Well, he became prime minister and decided that wasn't a deal he could afford. And so he was the promise. Uh, this was quite controversial in Canada and Newfoundland. The premier started, took down all Canadian flags, all the provincial offices. Uh, he showed his, showing how angry he was. And people were buzzing about it. There, was no, there weren't a lot of things people could do. So Kevin, in the course of three hours, built this basic website called the Ferry Over Newfoundland and Labrador. He sent it out to, I think, 15 friends and family. And within three weeks, about 5% of the population in Newfoundland had joined the campaign. Uh, he became an A1 above the full story in Canada. Um, uh, there were 10,000 posters that were downloaded off this website and papered across the province. The blog on the site became the most traffic political blog for those six weeks in Canada. And it became this real passionate movement with a real authentic voice behind it. Kevin became the voice. And he kind of he built this audience, got excited, got jazzed, had clear victories along the way. People felt they were part of something historic. And it led to Prime Minister Martin coming back to the negotiating table led to something called the Atlantic Accord, which is a $2 billion settlement of the province. That, that, I used to always say that's $2 billion Canadian dollars, so that means only you know, a couple bucks in America. But in fact, today, I think the Canadian dollar is more valuable than the American dollar, so that's just $2.5 billion. Dollars. And what's interesting about this whole campaign is that, again, this whole thing happened over six weeks, and it was all true grassroots passion uh, that really made it, made, it, made it challenging. And what I like about the story is it's not about shiny, you know, shiny images or graphics, it's about a message having a compelling story and then feeding that passion. So along the way, people always felt that they were that they were getting towards closer to a goal. There were constant reminders that this was something that was growing and becoming successful. And in fact, that, that year, the State of the Union Address in Newfoundland, that's called the Speech of the Throne, led off by thanking Kevin McCann uh, and Fairdale for Newfoundland for making the 